organizing online resources visually. Resources are organized to differentiate instruction for students of all abilities. These digital resources are organized so students can access them at school or at home. By organizing the resources in a collection, the teacher can instantly modify the pace of the lesson to meet the specific needs of a group of students. Now, we're going to talk about a tool called Symbaloo to organize websites. So Symbaloo, I wanted to make sure you could see that spelling, it's Symbaloo.com um, to organize resources. Now, think about how your current practices for um, saving resources, um, bookmarks, favorites, mm, print, email them to yourself, all of those things, mm -mm. that's old school. We need new strategies. And I, uh, Symbaloo is an example of social bookmarking site. There's another entire lesson about social bookmarking, but it's called social bookmarking is because it's not just your bookmarks private on your computer. You can make them public if you choose to do that. And thank, thank, thankfully, people have done that before for us, so we can go ahead and use theirs. Now, this is what Symbaloo looks like. Symbaloo, this is a very complicated Symbaloo, but yours can be very um very different. I'm going to show you a number of examples, but let's just kind of take a little tour here. It, look across the top, you have those tabs. Those are actually called your web mixes. And like a binder that you would flip to the section, these are the tabs that you can go ahead and create, make your own. And then here's the social piece. You can choose to keep it private or you can make it public. This is an example of a public one, and I searched under the term BYOT or BYOD. That means bring your own technology or bring your own device. So somebody has gone ahead and created a, a web mix, and they made it public so I can go ahead and um, use it if I want, and I can modify it. I can bring it in and make changes. Now, I do presentations on this topic all the time, and I'm like, I don't know that one, that one, that one. So I'm excited to actually dig in and find out a few more of those resources. So that social piece, we all live in a social networking world. You want to, when you make your Symbaloo, and you make it a perfect one for whatever you teach, really do think about making it public so other people can go ahead and um, reap the benefits of your hard work. Now this this is mine. Mine isn't quite as pretty as I hope it's going to be soon. It's not super pretty because I haven't gone back and found the icons and the specific um, buttons for everything. And so like that you see Evernote, the pretty little green uh, elephant, that looks much nicer than Wordle just written. And so I, want, I need to go in and kind of uh, work on this a little bit. But this is my web mix of my web my favorite web 2.0 tools at the moment and I love that you can color code everything and you can see when you make your tiles you can go ahead and color code them and put them into different um, groups now you can have your a variety of web mixes you don't have to just have one and cram everything on there so you can go ahead for your different classes have a different um, tiled or a web mix for that. Now, you can start with your empty one, your own, you just want your own thing, do your own thing, that's on the left. But I strongly suggest do a search first in the Symbaloo gallery and see if anybody has something started. I, I'm shocked by the beautiful Symbaloos that I have found out there. Now, I searched on just Web 2.0 because that's that's what I do a lot of work on and 5,000, almost 6,000 results, Web 2.0. And that's how I found that first one um, when I did the search for BYOT. So I'm like, hmm, I don't think, but well, I will tell you with the search isn't um, super specific because I'm looking Web 2.0, but diet and fitness, but there could be something in there. I learned if you could be real specific. Uh, specific in your search that really helps because then you can drill down and, and get to certain things and you can also search by different grade levels and things like that. Here's a nice blank one. You're ready to make your own. I don't know if you can get rid of that Google box in the middle. I think it's designed that you could, you know, you're looking for something you can go right there instead of going out to Google. Um, so I don't know if that can be moved. 
that's just an I don't know at this point. And, and if you look in the upper right hand corner, search for tiles. So each little box is called a tile. So if you wanted to put in, for example, Skype, search for Skype and they give me three options which one do you like and then I can select for them but what I thought was really interesting was next to it where you said we found 36 web mixes about that have Skype in them and I'm thinking hmm and I now I could click on that 36 so this might be another way that you can uh, get your search very specific that's what I was wondering um, it, it's just a new way to do it so I take my Skype and I put that tile into my web mix. Now that looks so much nicer than when I just write out the word Skype, which is always an option when you make it when you make a tile. So like that much better. All right. Now in the right corner, right underneath the where I typed originally Skype, it says share. That's where you choose to share or not to share. And so it depends on what your purpose is. If it's more of a generic uh, web mix, like let's say you're doing landforms and you want to make a, a web mix on landforms, that's you could be kind of generic. If it's more personal, then you might not want to share it. So it all depends on what you're doing. So sharing, great things. Okay, color coding. You can color code. There's you know certain colors you can pick from and then you can move everything around. This is just... I think the generic one when you start. Now, you sign in and make an account. You are the teacher. We can't have students under 13 on here making their own. But if your students are older than that, this is a great tool to show them. I find that <clears throat> students and teachers love this because it's so much more visual. Think about your bookmarks or your favorites right now. Okay. Mess. Tons of stuff. You don't even know where it is. You don't know what it means. You have to open up each one but there's some of you that have organized them already into folders and they all look nice and alphabetized, or whatever. You can now take those and put them right into your symbol. You might make a symbol that students can access from a center when they finish um, their activity. Another way um, that I've worked with a teacher recently, and she made a parent page, a parent web mix for resources uh, for working at home. I worked with another teacher that did um, iPad apps. And there, there's just so many possibilities, but I think what draws me to this is the visual part of it. Speaking of visual, social networking, pin it, pin it, you can go ahead and pin it. Now, there's a lot of wasted time that could happen on Pinterest, but there's a lot of educational um, stuff, boards. Basically, what Pinterest is, is you can pin a picture and then tell some more something about it and other people can go ahead and pin that to their board it's like an old it's like the bulletin board that you cut out pictures from magazine you say oh I like that put it on the bulletin board that's really what the the essence of Pinterest is but then you have the whole thing like Twitter and Facebook that you have the following and the followers and and all of that kind of thing so you have the social piece of it but you cannot believe the educational resources that are out there. Look at that great Gatsby character map. I'm like, wow, don't reinvent the wheel. Why should we? Well, somebody produced that, and they might teach the same subject area that you do. You want to start following that person because if they're going to produce one great thing, they are probably going to produce many great things. Math, definitely not a good search. You want to be a little bit more specific, maybe even a grade level um, topic. 3D shapes would have been better than just math. But then you, that's another way for you to find followers. You might choose to have a Pinterest, a personal Pinterest account and a professional Pinterest account. So you don't have your recipes with your math lessons. You know, you, you can go ahead and decide how you want to go ahead and do this. I will tell you, I was so afraid of Pinterest because all I could think is it, I'll lose hours and hours of time, which I lose hours and hours of time when I do get in here. And so what I do a lot of times if I actually have to set the timer on the um, on the stove and say, OK, only going to pin for a half an hour today. So it is because one picture leads you to one thing and one board leads you to another and another, and another, and another Um Gentlemen, you might not like this concept. It definitely is 96% um, women or something like that. So, gentlemen, it might not be your thing, 
stay over in Simbaloo and organize your stuff that way. Uh, there is uh, you, some of that stuff you look at and go, oh, that looks awfully primary. There's all different ideas. And this one is from a teacher that teaches algebra at the 712 level. So there are definitely resources all the way across the board. Now, organizing online, you want to do it online versus your computer because you want students to be able to access the resource 24-7. And not that we want them up 24-7, but by putting them online and not just in your computer, it opens up the possibilities to extend learning beyond the school day. Thanks.